Onivia, League of Legends highlights. Overwhelming engaged potential for the side of Hanwai Peaceful. I think for T1, your best bet with this composition is to snowball early. And it is a Zeri comp, but we can have some of those moments around the early objectives, the early Herald fights, the early Dragon. Farm and get the extra gold from your CS. So missing out so heavily in Hanwai Peaceful's not even allowing Zayas to play lane 1v1, just really putting him in an uncomfortable spot right now. Alcaria making his way in as well. Speaking of uh, uncomfortable spots, that's where Zekker is as well in this first blood as Ona comes on over and is going to be able to take that one down. So T1 on the board. He has no idea that could be overlooking potentially. Yeah. For a dive. The light is a pretty good bodyguard, but it's four versus two here towards the bottom side of the map. There it is. The sling does come back, but Viper will survive. And the turret is so angry. Zekka is going to move in. He finds the ulti onto Faker, who does survive the engagement. Zekka still just trying to protect his bottom lane. It's working out so far. As he unbinds the soul, finds the double knockup. Seismic shot goes wide. And T1 will not find a kill down here. Beautiful defense. Oh, oh and they get the kill on a Faker. Beautiful defense from Honor Life Esports. T1 give up. We used to experience with Twisted Fate when he was a mid laner as well. The way that you would counter it is by, uh, okay, I'll hold that thought as Cease and Assist does come in. Seismic shove as well. The full combo, but from over the wall, there's Viper. Delight survived for way too long, but now Carrier has dove on top of Viper. He's trying to avoid the burst fires as now the wall is going to come in and T1, they single out the AD carry. And are we certifying it, Wolf? I mean, I think I will. It's two kills here early for the Zeri. And what I was about to mention. Bit ahead of themselves trying to set up for this dragon end up losing the fight now they will look to try to secure this now owner very far away yeah carrier is going to get stunned up here delight just playing bouncer will try and get owner out of here they aren't not going to be able to find it and ox you're right next to me dude like esports not if it's point and click you know you have to catch the zeri you have to pick off boom and if you fail to do so you will lose a team fight Supports thrown around here a little bit. Carrier not really finding too much and now does put his uh, ultimate on cooldown. You can see T1 are priced into forcing these engage about 500 gold here uh, for T1. And so very even here in this mid game, I think, like you guys were talking about, the fact that Gumiushi is so strong, it's a clear win condition for T1. Alma Life Esports though, they just want to get into these team fights. They want to be able to try to lock down this area. Of course, Magnus Storm's pretty good, but so is this. The cease and desist comes in and Faker and Ona just showing Zekka that this combination of Talia and uh, and the Vi is not to be trifled with. And yeah, that's part of the issue as well. Hot Life Esports have two carries in their composition. If you target one of them like that, if you do that to Zekka in the lead up to or just at the start of a team fight, suddenly you're dealing with three tanks and a Varus, and it isn't that on her Varus. So the ability to have that sort of sustained damage in a fight isn't there. You know, kind of shows you the priority when it is a Chemtech Soul. Five members of Hot Life Esports group up. T1 don't even care. Yeah. So just look to get pressure in the side lanes, look to try and cement more for lead. You really will feel frustrated if Guma simply flashes away from it. So I think this is definitely giving an edge of the T1. Homelike Esports are on the objective. Yeah, started this one up, Perry on a flank angle. We know that the wall can always come in and there it is for Faker. He is not going to ride it through. He's just going to try and disrupt as there is the Destiny to light off on the side, but there is the engage from Carrier. The seismic shove and Viper is going to be wiped out. Sorry, Zeka has already gone down. The Drake is going to be secured, but that is sold for maybe just a team fight loss as Faker will take down Doran. All of that money, meaning not that much. And team Does have smite. TP is available for Zeka and Doran, but the Baron is going down so fast. It is. Peanut should be able to make it into the pit, but this is going to be a difficult 50-50 to win. He flashes forward and they just turn on him immediately. Taken down before the Baron's in range. That's going to be the secure. And T1 just level-headed the whole time. They'll take themselves their purple worm and now they'll look to take down the turrets. And that is the prize. He knows he dies if he eats it but the Baron's health never even gets close to a smite range. And you can see the problems in the composition here for Hanwha Life, you know, even with the, the setup they have, is Doran is a huge brick wall of recovery. Kind of unprecedented. There is a soul, which is still stats here for Hanwha Life, but T1 with the Baron, he should be able to get even more of these items. Seismic Shot gonna be picked up once again, as Faker finds yet another one. That's a good Glacial Prison though, onto Zayas. He's gonna have to get out of there. As the Unbound Soul gets Zekka back to safety as well, but now the re-engage. Delight looks for it, but he's just dead before he can do anything. 
And so T1 with five men strong, still with that Baron for another minute. And there, they've already gotten rid of the horse. There's just not enough sustained damage in this composition for Hanwha, even with the re-engage. As you're looking at Poke Forest, you're looking at Ione, there's no mage here that can just layer damage upon damage upon damage. There's no real AD carry, not traditionally anyways here for Viper. He's got to poke his oh. way through. Yeah, Seismic Shove is going to connect onto Doran as he teleports in. That is not the warm welcome that he was wanting as he looks to try and help out his teammates. Looks to try and get out of there. Gumi Yushi taking matters into his own head. The uh, the Hurricane, I just get excited. I, I see a Crit Cloak and I see a BF Sword and my brain just says Infinity Edge. It's locked in, you know, that's what yeah. you, you yeah. assume it's going to be. And now, oh, oh no, possibly with a bit of a face check here, will be oh. taken out two seconds before the Elder. And this is one of the issues, you know, they went in for the IE, but it took so much time, they didn't have presence on the map. Hunter Life East will set a trap, and because T1 are late there, Boris holding them back, it means they don't have a jungler now. Yeah, they don't have a jungler, and now Doran can do his work, and this time, it makes sense to sit on Dragon and have Doran hold the angle here. Now he's gonna have to wrap around. No 50-50 with no smite. Exactly, let's see what T1 can do. They're gonna have to try and fight this to avoid losing the Elder. There's a seismic shove, and they are going to even out the numbers. It's no Doran. Okay, survives for a very long time, but then does go down. There's the Elder now, as they have the executed second finds him, and a three-man shove from Faker is massive. And it's a double for Faker. They'll take a double as well for Gumiushi, and it's now only Viper left with this Dragon buff. And I don't think they care. Faker's just gonna throw some rocks at him, and that's the ace. And even Elder isn't enough. T1, they lose the dragon. It seems like it's gonna be doomed, but they handle the fight. They managed to lock them down. The help on Guma was so close to the execute threshold, but not quite there. And Viper just cannot do enough. Viper can't do enough. He doesn't have the time. He's playing with Alibaris here, and even with. The miracle of owner just stepping forward there and getting caught. Hanwha worked on now. Oh. Hanwha life to try to contest this Baron, but it's already gone. Yeah, yeah it's already gone. There's easy. A lot of these champions for T1 can escape over the wall. Just like you said. And you're right. Focus assessment, very, very good. It's his. It's his first game of Recon the season, uh, and he's played so many. He's he's played six unique champions of playoffs. So be his seventh. Oh, okay. Oh no, looking for that opportunity. Gets into the back line. They dive on top of Viper. He's able to get himself out. Now 1v1 and he finds it against Zayas, the ulti. And Viper's still alive. alive! He finds the double kill. Oh, it's going to be the next to go down into the GA. Is now Doran is just playing bodyguard. And T1, they couldn't do it. They killed him so many times. Owner again. That time they weren't able to get there. Owner again is, is, is picked here before the Elder. And it's a really nice fight here for Hanwha Life. But they get a second miracle. They get a second lease on life. Here. How many do they need? I mean, we already wrote the obituary. <laughs> yeah. We were memeing about Carrier and stuff. We were talking about Gumasari. <laughs> I mean, they I was ready for, for a flank. Carrier's fishing. We have to remember as well that T1, they don't have a lot of range either as far as defending against these barrened up siege minions. Um, not something that we've had to talk about really either as Hummel Life will now move towards this inner turret. They are splitting. We are, we are getting back to even territory as the Weaver's Wall is going to be just elected into Faker, not going to be able to convince them not to break open the base. It's like you say, it could be a trade of inhibited turrets, but Hummel Life Esports, it doesn't look like they're stopping as this Elder is still ticking down. Another five seconds on that oh! one. They find the engagement and they blow off Faker into the back line. Goes Curry, he tries to find that quickness, but he's permanently frosted and taken down. The deletion on two members, is that enough for the end of the game? I don't think so. As Hummel Life Esports, they don't think so either. Yeah, so many cooldowns been there. They have to respect the Zeri. Guma still such a threat with Flash available, with GA available. They will actually look to reset on the back of this. Doran's going to TP in. They want to look for the end They want to end. They want to end. They don't want to deal with that Weaver's Wall anymore. Or rather the flip. Oh, no! oh, they find the engagement. Able to get out of there though is Zayas. He did have that flash available as there's the teleport back in. Owner is going to be CC'd as well. As he's going in, but he's by himself. T1 are just running in one after the other. The destiny is going to be popped, but I think their destiny is one dead Nexus and zero one in the series. Humble Life Esports were down 11,000 gold and they will kill the Nexus here in game one. You know what? I think I'll take five of these, please. Yes, please. <laughs> they take it in the end. Especially the Viego aspect of this composition. It does make me think, because one of the picks we've seen, obviously everyone thinks Scion when they think lane stops, but Zach has also been a really powerful one. The dive potential with the passive early. He's one of them for Peanut here. Teleport back from Carrier. And they now Ona might have an opportunity. They don't know. 
I have no vision. Yeah, there's the flash forward from Carrier Viper, able to try and get off to the side. Good crash down to try and get him out of there, but there's the permafrost, and Viper will be taken down. Kumiyushi gets the first blood. Such a good read from Owner had complete information. Trades and kind of guarantee the, the sort of healing reduction. But the thing with it oh. is you kind of just wait out the healing reduction before you burrow underground. Oh, this is a little bit dangerous as Faker is going to get engaged on immediately. Flashes away the Glacial Prison. Going to go wide. There is the lockdown on the Dragon for T1. But Delight gets them on in there. They take down Faker. Empress Divide is massive and has two kills to start off. The Vicaria is not long for the world either. And Armor Life Esports, they lose a Drake, but they'll take three. This was the main criticism I had with T1 in their previous series against Hanwha. They show up on these objectives before the comp is online, before they really have any similar... They have a Varus who's rotating over. They don't have to hard engage unless it's onto the package list Faker. He's got it on this angle now. Yeah, this is so dangerous. They do manage to take down the second dragon, but they look for the engage. There's the package to live it over the top, but it's owner that goes down for a second. We'll find Faker's special delivery, and it's Onwa that managed to get it on over. And it's a Hextech Drake on top of everything. T1 pretty happy that they're at least... And he just already looks so tanky at this point. Yeah, no, this is kind of ridiculous. Is Gumiushi going to come on over? Piercing Darkness not going to work out. It's now, let's see whether Zayas is going to survive. He flashes four, gets the head bomb. The Empress Divide is going to throw him against the wall as they focus the turret. The Bolt Breaker is going to get the shield for Peanut. And Zeka, he survives with his shifting sands. Sets up his own turret as well as they take down the Zack Doran. He survived. His turret had already basically fallen down earlier, and the Rift Herald is going to charge into that inner turret as well. Doran actually having the gusto to take down Shelly himself. It's so rare that a champion can just walk up in front of three people, walk behind the Herald, and just auto the eye, but Rek'Sai is just that champ, uh, and I don't feel like the payoff is really there. It's a minute oh. till that dragon, though, and that's going to be a oh, TP coming in. Yeah, TP from Zekka here. Moose scores his top side. Is now Faker having to deal with it. Conquering Sand's going to come through, and of course there's Peanut. Turns up, that is going to be just the last Sand Soldier auto, and Zekka just collects it. I mean, with Hail of Blades here, the early Nashers, three kills to his oh, the fight. Yeah, very yeah. late, and also, you know, Faker doesn't have that many quite stacked up yet. Again, Ooh, Zayas, this flank angle pretty big, big from Zayas, like you were talking about. Carrier making his way in. The Drake already secured. Han was first of the game, but there is the elastic slingshot. They dive on in. The package down as well, and they take down Zekka, the priority target. Doran looks for the backline and will be able to trade the mid lane in. And there is a great Magnus Storm as well. Viper, the next one that can try and carry this fight. His owner is starting to pop off, but the piercing arrow going to take him down. Zayas now just trying to peel as best he can. Peanut, how are you still alive? Almost managing to escape as Viper has to flash away. Doran, of course, can just survive for basically forever. He'll make his way out as Viper was kind of baited into this one and will be falling down. Dodges a few abilities and T1 win a team fight. It's just tank diff. It's just tank diff. Both of these tanks, all three of these tanks rather, running rampant in these fights. The initial kill onto Zekka is so huge, you know, with that, Leandris, with that Naxxus would be someone who could... Zekka also flashing there, so that's another tool gone here for Hanwa. But Faker, he's just so behind in terms of his itemization, he does not match the poke of Zekka, ironically enough. Oh, oh, no, no. Crash down, Carrier, gonna get knocked off and destroyed. Zayas diving on in there, doesn't find the stretch up from the kill back does come on in though. And now Oda, he knows how to play the Rel. Empress Divide does nothing to Heartbreak and dies over it. And Faker will now get into that back line. And Oda, pretty good at the Azir as well. Very nicely done. He'll now just transform into everyone. And the snowball of the team fight is beautiful. T1, they love going to Baron. They're going to do so now. As soon as the momentum starts going favor T1, the Viego resets come through. Guma and Dragon to do what they can. Well, let's see whether they can actually get some sort of steal. As Faker still in that mid lane, Doran has moved back to try and contest. The Dragon is going to equalize. The T1 will start it off once again. And Zayas does take a hex gate over. That's a teleport in from Doran. Just gets into the pit. Of course, he can do this because the Rex Aishi is so incredibly tanky. And just now, gonna be burrowed around, moving in. Let's see who manages to take it. It's Peanut, the lockdown, the dragon, but can they win a fight? Is the question. Doran unable to tunnel his way out. And that is gonna be a kill going over to Zayas. So T1, that will take the fight.
but they won't be able to pick up the Drake. The Light's hovering around the edge of the Drake, and Hanwha Life, it looked like it was very clear they did not want to take that bite into Faker's package. They were just looking for secure the Drake and evacuate, and the second the Smite goes Peanut's way, they bail out. Doran is a casualty of this call from Hanwha Life, but at least they're able to stack two Dragons here. Problem is that Baron is still up, and T1 are going to get more than just that pick on the door, and now they have to move in and respond. All right, teleport in. Yeah, Peanut has Flash. Looks like they wanted this group. over the wall as Delight. He has an opportunity as well. Peanut gets into the back of the pit. This is dangerous. Has to flash away immediately. Now Doran, he's able to take the front door. And T1 are going to peel away. Faker still with that package up. They want to get that turn. And they're going to need to do it sometime soon. Now the package is going to be used just to try and route Dor Doran here. But it isn't exactly the most. He actually just decides to go back on top of the package. I don't know about that one. That is going to be Ona getting his first kill of the fight. Takes down the big tank of this one, and both flashes from the carries are now on cooldown for Humble Life. And this may just be both objectives to T1 here. They can rush down this Baron now, and with Doran down, it's hard for Humble to stop. I mean, Peanut doesn't have flash, they don't have vision. All right, Peanut and Delight still here. There's the CC onto the buy. He is very tanky, but the Rel is going to go down. Faith is just executed, but I just don't think it's enough to win them this fight. Viper cannot turn up in time. Another teleport. Echo going to come on in as Zeka. He could be the hero, but full information is there for T1. And they will be able to take down this Baron. Zeka unable to get in there, and he may not be able to keep himself alive. He is. Not enough cooldowns here for T1. What if Faker gets to show up without using the teleport? That's just going to put them on full point. And this is just a chain of events, a domino effect of what happened with Humble Life trying to stop so, You know, we often see the Corky like, pick it up last second and come over. T1 will have ample time to set up for this soul fight. Now, Humble Life is about to try to attack Carrier, but you're going to take so long to kill him. Yeah, this you're, is taking you're, you're forever, and there is no damage here in this fight. Remember, this is a lot of tanks. Of course, there is Peanut there. They will be able to get through the Sejuani, but they have to invest everything to take him down, and they'll lose an inhibitor for it. They may even lose the base as the Backs have now been started for Humble Life Esports. Going Shadow just to stop them. And they'll take the first Nexus turret. There is so much damage under these turrets as well with the Corky in the center. I don't think that was worth it, Humble Life. Absolutely not. And I think trying to set up an engage would have been a little, a little bit more successful. Just sit under the turret and try to look for a Zekka flank. They shut them down. You end up losing inhibitor for this. You get the kill on this what T1 had last time. But the map control that they have is way more oppressive. Threatening that bottom inhibitor, taking it down. Is Peanut now in trouble? Yeah, Perry just going to interrupt him here as Peanut tries to take the Hexgate, but it is not going to work out. He gets himself a big old shield and is just going to be taken out. There is now Ona turning into the vine, looking to try and get a little bit of a re-engage. I think Peanut trying to buy some time makes a bit of sense, but feels like a little bit like he was throwing away his life there. Yeah, I mean, he could have maybe tried to set up for a sandwich, but there's just no control. He's identified early. Oh, God. Oh, Delight taking so much damage here is now T1 pushing down this mid inhibitor turret. That is going to evaporate. And this feels a whole lot cleaner. There is the engage. The elastic switch up. Fantastic by Zayas to make sure they're all CC. The Empress Divide tries to get something done, but it's from the grave for Zekka. And once again, just engaging with reckless abandon. Is Zach gorgeous this game? And T1, they will answer back and make this best of five a best of three and win one against Humble Life for the first time this playoffs. And I feel like, you know, game one, we saw Humble Life composition kind of lacking damage. It was enough to get them over the line, but this time, they just couldn't. Fear for T1 in this competition. I think on paper, you just removed the, the right side of your screen and you look at only a T1 strap. Fantastic grab. Great scaling, ornament's gonna be fantastic. You have front to back. Decent searing charge, but our consultant gets Peanut out of there, but now won't have that Q available. That will be the Drake going over to T1. First Mountain collected here for a composition with two tanks. That is scary as Needlework has come out here. Doran fighting against the Cassante and will be able to stay alive with that extra healing. His way in from the south. As they do get the ward over, Faker will be able to move first here from mid. Let's see what the light can actually get done here, Chain. Not quite going to connect, but there is the ram. It's going to get called, gets a knockoff only on to Delight right now, but his owner goes down so incredibly low. Super Mega Death Rocket coming in. Dawning Shadow to try and keep them alive. And Doran is just dashing around with reckless abandon. The Drake goes to harm the life. And they manage to pick up Zayas. Emperor's Divide used just to get them the heck out of there. As long, what are you doing, mate? Uh, does move his way in, but Ona able to get himself out of there. And will be just fine.
Um, okay, not gonna stop him one more time, as this is getting a little bit rough now. Zekka moving on over, there's the ulti, it does come on through, they dive on in! Empress Divide gonna be avoided here by the Yone, but in comes Tomiyushi, over the wall goes Peanut, but he's once again met with another T1 member, and they are routed where they stand! I mean, this is a huge overcommitment there, and there's a backup on the play. They are now looking for this Herald, though. T1 are moving to try and follow up, Zekka does have TP. Yeah, Doran has made it in. There is the teleport for the Yone. Zeus off on an angle, has a Mega Blast cone to get himself into that front line exactly where he wants to be. Death Sentence goes wide, and now Doran into the mist has been a bit immune, but Kumiyushi, he's not. The Yone dives on top of him. Super Mega Death Rocket needs yet another fight. Started off with a Jinx getting excited as Ona not able to get his own reset. Great hook, but it's onto Zeus. That's not a priority target. That movement speed for Viper is now wearing off. Oh, that Q. But it's a great catch from Delight. And Peanut's going to lock down that kill. Now Kumiyushi running for the hills. Great lens. But it's not going to dodge a rocket. That is going to go into the back of his head. And T1 once again going to lose out on the fight. Good flash from Faker. But these death sentences are just magnetic. Delight's thresh has been so good in playoffs. And you look at this, this situation here for, for T1. And yeah, you... Once again... This time, Peanut having an even better performance than what we saw in game number one. I feel like he's much more present, maybe too present, if we're going to include that uh, play previously. But it's definitely better to go that direction than it is the direction of passivity, I think, especially. Um, getting a teleport, big news. Yeah, ends up being pretty favorable. The fact that the Herald was being top and you don't even immediately get the tower, you know, Zayas doing a good job of dealing oh. with the pressure there. You do see them moving over to capitalize, so now with this pressure on the top of the jungle, okay. Yeah, Kumiyushi actually sticking around for a little bit longer than he needs to as the permafrost and Super Mega Death Rocket to give the kill to Viper. So that's a play you make if you have cleanse, and perhaps a thrash on your team to lantern you out, but the cleanse was a few seconds away, oh, and you don't no. have the safety net to get you out of that situation. Oh, and they're just pushing a carrier out as well here. Viper is already so big. This is a wild attempt, but it's going down fast. Yeah, the uh, control in the back of the pit is going to be taken down, but it does give Homolite Esports full information. Hook now going to come on through, Flame Chompers go down. They do manage to secure the Baron, but can they find the fight as they split the Red Sea as in goes the Yone, finds absolutely no one. Double knock up from Carrier is fantastic, and they're on top of Viper in an instant. Double kill for Faker, and this is on top of the Baron they've already taken. Homolite Esports just caught napping. And this is how you know I mean, Faker ends up picking up the Doran. He's not there. And T1 make these calls all the time. It's a trademark T1 moment. 20-minute Baron set up for it. Well, now move over, even out the Dragon count as well. The kill count uh, actually just evened out there by T1, but I feel like it is so much more. The amount that they're going to be able to pick up off the back oh. of this. Not really able to engage or flank with no vision, no teleport wards for Zekka. Yeah, they do have the teleport, so there's at least that. He can teleport onto the ward or something like that. They get a nice knock up on the Doran, but he's just barely inside the mist. They do get the Glacial Prisoner's Carrier. May have stepped too far forward. That is a lot of CC, but he just baited them in. And then the Ram comes down. Viper trying to dodge, but he's going to get thrown back into the waiting arms of T1. It's more kills for the god of the mid lane, and T1, they're looking to take more. It just feels like Honolite Esports aren't prepared. T1 firing on all cylinders. They're the ones setting the pace of the game. Where is Zeka in that fight? They're just not present. It feels like they've kind of, after game two, just fallen out of control. And T1, they are driving the pace of this game, driving the pace of the series, and looking to end here and now. Yeah, and frankly, after the beginning of game one, is Zeka here not going to get anything done with this? Yeah, Doran, he's, uh, he's inside his mist, and he will be able to at least protect this Nexus turret for now, 23 minutes into the game. And so uh, it is pretty difficult to push Nexus turret. You look at that so, top. The fact he hit two hooks onto Faker in that passage of play, and neither of them was the signal to go, just shows how rough the state of the game, in, game is for them now. And how powerful Baron is into a composition well, like Dragon. As Hummel Life Esports, they definitely need to be towards that Baron, like you were talking about, Wolf. That is exactly where they are. Drake is going to be secured. That is going to be Soul Point. Zekka taking down this Drake. So that's going to even things out as far as Dragons are concerned. If he stays on it, does have Teleport. Can join this fight at a moment's notice. As T1, they have got this Baron down extraordinarily low. I think it's actually going to be taken this time. Never mind. They are going to turn the big Teleport as Empress Divide. 
Gonna be flashed out of the ulti avoided once again. And Zeko also gets himself out of trouble. Doran going golden, but he is so incredibly low and will be taken out. The hook comes in and there is another ram to come down. Peanut flashing away and this time the searing charge is not going to do it. But Delight is not going to be oh. so lucky. The double knock up is gigantic from Seko who once again drifts away from the fight. But Humble IB Sports have lost too much and T1 have lost no one. They lost no one, no kill for Viper, no reset to come through. And it was so close there. The angle for Zekka, he had it, but he whiffs it. Faker mistimes the ultimate, but Zekka's not able to follow up with anything there. And it's not a trade. We've seen so many of the trades go on a life's way. It's one for one. Viper lives. Oh, Peanut possibly engaged on here. As Jonas Strong is giving us the full zoom. That is massive. The snare is Zekka. Going to be taken out at the same time as the Baron. Gumayushi with the fancy moves. And T1 are going to march up the mid lane. And now without the Yone, who has been that threat on the back line, every time we've seen Guma in trouble, it's usually been Zekka, the one providing the threat. Hot Life Beast will get a much worse position to try and fight this off. I think they just have to give up the mid inhib, but their top inhib is open, so this could just be double inhib for T1 before Zekka's even back up. Whoa! Uh, Doran not immune. Uh, I can confirm. Taking a lot of damage here from Faker with that Leandri's anguish. And T1 gonna take their first Nexus turret. That was dead in a blink of an eye. One they cannon still in here. position, yeah. Still allowing them to continue to put the pressure on. They can take out this inhibitor here in top side. Two inhibs down, waiting for that next wave. Hanwha life. Seven seconds for Zekka, but how much of an impact will his ult really make? It hasn't been his day here. It hasn't been his game. Yeah, there's the ram once again. It is the ulti from Peanut, but not able to interrupt the call of the Forge God. Now Doran doing a lot of work with his scissors as Peanut able to get back, but that's not a reset for Viper. Just barely not able to get it done, and the Yone falls down. It's under the locks, that one up, and now it's his turn to pop up in the fight. Faker finds a triple just immediately, and T1 moved to match point. What a great one. And once again, it's the vein. This time around into the Rex side. Yeah, he says, if I'm not getting a blind top pick, I'm playing vein. Those are the only two things that happen. <laughs> I either blind or storm. Be on the cards. As you can see, Doran, he has managed to make it there. With the back coming in from Zeus, doesn't get to take teleport, of course, on the vein. You do want to have as much mobility as possible on this champion. And so one they didn't ultimately end up winning the game, but it was able to get a ton done on the Zeri. Oh, they have spotted that Gumiushi is possibly alone. There's the paranoia as Peanut dives in. He flashes on top of the CC. He's going to be there. The Crescent goes too good from Ona. He's just going to get them out of there. Zekka will turn up. They do manage to take down the Varus, but the Zeri, nothing she can do, and T1 will win the skirm. And what did Ox just say? You know, the first gank, the first attempt completely backfires. And as soon as I saw the paranoia come out and then things go dark, I had question marks over my head. Is this even work out? You don't have prior, you don't have control. And the light will get taken Whoa. out here as well. No yeah, exit. He's up, but well. I, I got a little bit confused. I looked over at you, Wolf, and then I'm like, wow, he's flashing under a turret. That was his turret. Yeah. And you could tell. Uh, so Delight really did. You could tell from how the, the paranoia act. So uh, convert that into pushing ever further in side lanes. And speaking of which, now Zeus, with the fact that Hummel IP Esports is going to be so distracted putting out fires elsewhere, he should have free reign. The thing is, if they just Delight, take certainly good news if you are a Hanwha Life fan, but he's going to have to put the team on his back, and he hasn't. It hasn't been his day, and he is a player that has required a day. As now, that was a decent sidestep there from Gumiushi, but there is no way he's surviving this one. Peanut able to lock one down, and so there is the first one for the Nocturne. Good news. That's a fight they were going to have some cool reads, but it just has not been the case. Like this Nocturne pick, from a big hole in draft as Carrier going in. Yeah, the hook does come on down there as they do get a stun. Carrier just all by himself, and he's really dead, guys. We'll see whether Hummel Life Esports can turn this into any extra of a kill. They give the kill over to Zekka there. You know, I, I really question whenever this happens, but it's been a bit of a consistent theme, especially since the champion has only shown up recently. Here doesn't have TP, so this is definitely advantage T1 as he's trying to rush his way over. Hanwha, you can just give this up and go for the Dragon instead. Yeah, Weave as well. Coming on through as Faker going to join the rest of his team. Doran just uh, watching, well, actually not, tunneling around, burrowing. Guys, just go Dragon. Oh, here's another possibility as the Magnet Storm comes on down. Chains of Corruption are not going to be enough to stop this one as Viper gets his first carrier. Is now in the back of the pit with absolutely nowhere to go. It's a double as the burst fire rains down. 
and I left. I don't know. And Ox, like, do you have the pin? Everyone thought they were going to be pushing towards the dragon as well, and it's not the way I thought it was going to happen with Zekka, but it's in fact Delight who makes the clutch play there with the Magnet Storm engage, gets by for those two kills, and that is a very scary thing for T1 here. Is now a gold lead for Hanwha Life. The early game so much in T1's favor, but some overextension, some small mistakes, and now Hanwha. Yeah, the Runans for the Zeri, so. A minute and a half until that dragon. It's Once a big end. I think all some going to be back up. Oh, oh dear. Empress Divide just going to throw Carrier back. That is going to be one pick, but the Baron just spawned 30 seconds ago. Possible opportunity here. As they have so much vision denial as well with things like the paranoia. They have topside push and Vagor can just put up a wall if they do want to start this, but they have not. So I think they're just going to give up the dragon here and look to try to push Doran. Oh, Doran could be in so much trouble. There are four people coming on over. That flash hook just amazing from Carrier, the seismic shove to push him back in. And if they just keep him CC'd, he is going to die. That is going to do it. The Rex Eye goes down. T1 get their pick, and they might also get a Baron. Uh, tough call to make here. This is not the same decisive 20-minute Baron we saw in game three. Yeah, this is dangerous, because Peanut's still here, and he has access to a light switch. Zeka has Flash ult as well. This is really risky. Yeah, Paranoia does come down. There's a Flash Magnus Storm, but it's only on to two. Delight not quite, quite finding the same amount of value, and he is going to be taken down. It's now Viper versus Zayas. Zayas actually trying to tumble around this fight, but he's crashed into that condemn amazing onto Zeka. As the Baron is going to go down, it's going to be Ona that takes it. Not able to find it is Peanut, and he's even taken down by Faker. Zeka gets rid of Carrier in the end, but they only lose one. Such a about 2,000 gold. It's not the end of the world for Harmon Life Esports, but the problem is, is that it's happened the last two games in a row, and the more it keeps happening, the more inevitable it feels, and it must be so difficult to hold on. As one heck of a flank angle, as information. Trying to be picked up here. Ona might be their target as Paranoia comes on in. Ona able to talk to the rest of his team. Crescent Guard does come out. He's taking a lot of damage, soaking a lot of damage, but it's not going to be enough. And the kill goes over to Viper. There is the pick on to the jungler, but I mean, the time what, what are you going to take? Yeah. Baron's already gone. It, it was running out anyway, so T1 didn't have much time to use it anymore, regardless. Dragon, Ona's gonna be up from that. Oh, oh Baker. Oh no, there's the face check. The crash down comes on in, and Peanut, he will be able to get the fear off. Yeah, he does manage to get the rocks down, but that is going to be the last auto, and that one might actually be impactful. That's a bigger one, because although he has TP, the timing is close to Dragon, so you can see Hunter Life Esports get complete control of the area before. Massive spike. This is IE's area as well, so this is really fast. Yeah, really fast, and also it's three mountain dragons if oh. they get this. Ona is likely to be able to get in there though. That is going to be the secure from Peanut. And there's the Flash Magnus Storm. Delight getting in there. Viper is halted as well. But the first kill is going to go over to T1. Delight now in trouble. And he is going to be taken out. And now Zayas, he is an AD carry as well. And he is looking gigantic in this one. That is going to be him hunting down Viper. He is going to be able to help take down Peanut as well. The hook from Carrier is just too good. And T1 are going to strike again. And cut your Split. Yeah, there's a hex flash over. Look at Sans the damage onto this turret as well. It's just gone. No, it's ridiculous. He's managed to complete his Trinity Force. Yeah, this is going to be fast here. T1 have to be decisive. Weaver's well ready for Faker. Yep, Faker going to get that one in there yeah. as Delight off to the side. Not necessarily in the best position here. They dive over. It's actually going to be Yuki again! Taking the Baron with the arrow! We've seen that one before. It's now pressing guard. Ona diving on in, and he just takes down Peanut. Matters into his own hands. And now Delight tries to go for the re-engage, but who's tankier? It is Carrier this time, and now Zayas, this is where he thrives. Viper just taking thirds of his health at a time, although dishing back a fair bit himself. And so Zayas going to retreat to the side lane, and the Baron... 8,000 gold, the advance 3,000 on the Baron. Yeah, he isn't I mean, there, though. looks hopeless. I think you always have to be a bit careful when Zayas leaves without having TP, because I think that's when immediately Hunter like people are looking for something. Well, they are definitely looking for it now. Tunnel does come in to flash out immediately from Faker. He is not risking it. He knows exactly what you say. But they just burn Paranoia yeah. with 10 seconds still dragging, so... Oh, the Black Hook, and he manages to find Zekka! Free delivery with the Seismic Show! Carrier finding the angle! That may have been the game-winning play. Carrier, he's just taken this game into his own hands. He and Owner have had so many fantastic engages with his locket, with Owner's Crescent Guard. They just go in, they're hell-bent on making the engages happen, and it works out. Oh. Zayas, will he be stopped? 
Viper on a, a weird angle there, trying to see whether maybe they could layer some CC, but it's not going to work out. The Zeri with the man disadvantage is just not going to be as scary in these team fights. Unlike these boys, they lose yet another inhibitor this series. And now it's a 10,000 gold lead between the two teams. Golden guys target without summoners, but you know, Faker obviously doesn't have his flash, but isn't an easy target to get on top of. There's so many threats on this composition. Fences. Of course, they have a vein. They, uh, she can cut through pretty comfortably, but AK1 are looming. And yeah, like you said, I mean, Faker, he's got the wall. He can just build that. He is going to put that one together now as Peanut is now in this pit. Can they win the smite is the question. Great spell shield comes on down, and that's the engage here from Ona. He tries to hold on. Hook not really doing too much, but it is Ona that takes the soul for T1. It's gigantic now because they're the ones with the shield. They're the ones with the control. Oh, and the hook is going to find this area. She is able to press that cleanse flash button, try and get himself out of there. But it's Delight that falls to flank angle from Saves the Flash. The tumble and the vein is going to find the fight. He goes invisible and snipes out the Zeri, and this man maybe should just become the eighty carry. So There's good. the cleanup from the vein. You needed a fantastic grab from Carrier. Kicks off the fight. You know, on like Esports thought T1 got the soul and walked away, but once again T1 have controlled the game, controlled the series, and are now looking to end. 16 out of 18 KP for Carrier, and it looks like T1 have done it. Another finals. The Gen Z T1 prophecy, it just keeps delivering. And on the sixth time of asking, T1 will do it again. Another grand finals.